Hi! In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you install OSX, El Capitan or later on ESXi. This tutorial will require that you own a Mac or at least have access to one and that you have a server running with ESXi. So if you don't have a server with ESXi yet, take a look at my blog post on how to install ESXi first. ESXi does not officially support virtualizing OS X. Fortunately, it's quite easy to get around this limitation. The first thing we have to do is to enable SSH. So go to configuration, security profile, properties, SSH, options, and make sure that the starter policy is set to either start and stop with the host or start and stop manually and click start. This should start the SSH service. So now we can click OK, OK. And we are done with configuring ESXi. The next thing we have to do is to go to insanelymac.com. I will put the link in the description below so you won't have any problem finding these files. And if you're running ESXi 6 as I am, you have to grab the unlocker version 2. And if you're running ESXi 5, 5.1 or 5.5, you have to get the VMware unlocker for OS X 1.3. I've already downloaded these files. So, um, and extracted it to a directory. So the next step, step is to transfer them to our server. For this I will use WinSCP. And once connected we have to navigate to VMFS, Volumes, select a data store, doesn't matter which one, I would select data store 1. Then I have created a directory which is called Tools and I just drag and drop the folder in there. Now that the files are stored on our ESXi data store, we can open PuTTY. Again, we connect to our ESXi host and change the directory to VMFS, uh, volumes, data store one, Tools Unlocker 208. Here we have a, a lot of different scripts that are for all different kind of purposes. So the Unlocker works for Fusion and um, and Player and the Workstation. So it's it's not only made for ESXi. So we won't need all these scripts. So we will only focus on ESXi dash install and uninstall for now. In order to um, in order to install the script, you should make the script executable. That's easily done by cmod plus x ESXi install.sh, and I also recommend to do the same thing with the uninstalled script, just in case. Now you can see that they have changed color, so you know they are executable. And the next thing you have to do is to type dot slash esxi install dot sh. This will install the unlock functionality. Uh, I won't do this on my host because I've already done so. And once the installation is complete, you will have to reboot your server. You will be prompted about this, so from here there shouldn't be any issues. Once that's done, yeah, I can uh, close all the windows and we will continue from there. In this step, I'm going to show you how to create a bootable disk image from the latest version of OS X. Because I'm going to uh, download all the required files from the App Store, you will need to have access to a Mac in order to proceed with this step. The first thing you have to do is to open the App Store Click on the OSX L Capitan link or search for OSX and download the required files. If you already are running uh, OSX L Capitan, you will get prompted if you're really sure to continue. Just hit continue and wait for the download to finish. 
I've already downloaded this, all the required files. So once the download is complete, open the finder, go to applications, and you will have the install OS X El Capitan installer. Uh, right click on the installer and say uh, show package contents. Navigate to contents and share support and you should find the install ESD DMG file. This actually contains all we need in order to create our bootable ISO file. So the easiest way of doing it is uh, copying this file to the desktop. Click paste. And I've done that as well. So I have the file right here. And the next step is to open the terminal and run three commands. In order to get the commands, I suggest you go to my blog and under the prepare the installation disk, you'll find three commands. Go back to the terminal and say CD desktop. And then we have to download the, uh, the script for creating the ISO file. The only thing this script will do is just to convert the DMG file to a bootable ISO file. So you click paste. If you want to take a look at the script, just copy the HTTP address in your browser and you can see the script before running it. Hit enter and the script has been downloaded. In order to run, just type sh create disk and press enter. Now that the script has finished, you'll notice that you have the lcapitan.iso file on your desktop. So it's important that you uh, make a copy of this, either to a USB thumb drive or copy it uh, on a network location. Whatever you do, uh, make a copy of this file since we are going to use this in the next section. Before creating the virtual machine, we need to upload the ISO file we just made to our ESXi host. The way you do it is to go to configuration, storage, uh, right click the data store you, where you normally store your ISO files, say browse data store. I have a folder here that says ISO and I've already uploaded the lcapitan.iso file we just made. So uh, let's start by creating the virtual machine. Right click on your server and say create a new virtual machine. Configuration should be typical. Give it a name, OS X demo. Uh, select the data store where you want to save the virtual machine. When asked for the guest operating system, say other, and it should automatically switch to Apple Mac OS X 10.10, uh, which is the one we are going to use. Click next. Uh, the network can be as default settings. Uh, when creating a virtual machine, especially for testing, I normally uh, recommend to do a thin provisioning so we don't use up a lot of space. Um, say 80 gigabytes, for, exa for example. Next. And before completion, uh, we want to change uh, or make, make changes to the virtual machine. I normally always start with removing the floppy drives and uh, and other unnecessary hardware. In this case, we will need the CD DVD ROM in order to install. So click the data store ISO file, checkbox, click browse, um, and navigate to your data store where you have your ISO located. Select the El Capitan ISO. Remember to check the connected power on. I always forget that one. Um, you can uh, you can add more memory to it, but the the default uh, settings are mostly okay. Uh, click finish. Now right click on the virtual machine and open the console, 
and press start. This, uh, this, the installation itself will take some time, so uh, I will just fast forward from here. When presented with the OSX installation wizard, you will need to go to the disk utility before installation. Select your uh, hard drive. Uh, there it is, and erase it. This way it will get the correct formatting which OSX requires before, prior to installation. Now it's done, close the window, click continue, accept the agreement. Now we can select the hard drive, continue, and from here it will take about 20 minutes in order to complete. At this point you should have a fully working OSX El Capitan virtual machine running on ESXi. There are however some things you should change, so make sure to check out the next chapter on how to configure your virtual machine. In this last chapter I'm going to show you how to properly configure your OSX uh, virtual machine. First off head over to the system preferences, go to energy saver and disable the display sleep and computer sleep. Since we are running on a virtual machine, these are not needed. Uh, you should also go to desktop and screensaver and dis disable the screensaver as it will just uh, use unnecessarily uh, resources. If you haven't already, uh, take the OSS, OSX base system and, and mount it. Head over to the CD DVD drive settings disconnect the data store image and you have to wait a little bit there you go and then we are going to um, connect to an ISO image on a data store go back to your data store and on data stores you should have a folder called VM images tools ISO images and select darwin.iso this is a VMware tools for ESXi, which I highly recommend to install in order to get uh, a tight integration between ESXi and OSX. Once VMware Tools has been installed, you will, it will require you to restart the machine. So click restart and wait for the virtual machine to boot up again. Once the virtual machine has restarted, we can unmount the VMware Tools and disconnect it from the data store image. The last thing we may want to do is to fix the resolution. If you go to uh, display preferences, you will notice that the only resolution available to you is 1024 times uh, 768. Uh, so in order to change the resolution, you have to download an additional application. Now head over to Safari, go to idmedia.no and use the search button to search for resolution. Here you will find my blog post on how to uh, change the Mac OS X virtual machine display resolution. Click it and download the VMware resolution set. 
Once the download is complete, open the extracted folder. And from here, you have to open a terminal window. The first thing you have to do is to become root. So uh, type sudo su. And when, if, if you're prompted for a password, enter your password. Next up, I have to change to this directory. So change directory to downloads slash VM where fix resolution. There you go. The next step is to make the script executable by cmod plus a, uh, sorry, plus x VMware resolution set. And now we can change the resolution to anything we want. So type dot slash VMware resolution set 90 20 space 10 80. And this will set a full HD resolution. As you can see, the display resolution changes immediately, but because of ESXi, the resolution we requested was full HD, but only a lower, a lower resolution was actually set. I, I recommend, if you, if you intend to use this virtual machine uh, as a client, I highly recommend to install Google Chrome and Google Chrome Remote Desktop on it. And once you connect, through uh, Google remote, remote Desktop, you can run this again and it should set the display resolution correctly to full HD. That way you can easily get access to this virtual machine from practically any device like uh, Windows, Mac and Android. So uh, this concludes the video tutorial and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. If you liked this particular video, please click the like button and I will consider making more of these. If you have any questions, you need help or just want to chat, please use the comment section below. And as always, I'll be really happy if you subscribe to my channel and see you guys next time.